Candice? Oh, she makes me thirsty to try out many new team comps because her kit raises the potential for many other characters in Genshin Impact. Disclaimer, this video is based on pre-release information, so damage ratios and things like that may change. While I am not so confident that she'll be an essential part of any meta teams in the near future, Candace's insane potential cannot be understated. She follows the likes of Chung Yun and C6 Bennett, allowing her to give her teammates Hydro Infusion on their normal attacks. But wait, there's more. She is much better than these two for a couple of reasons. To get everyone on the same page, let's talk about her kit real quick. Candace is a Hydro Polearm user who carries around the Aegis of Crossed Arrows, a circular shield that she uses as her elemental skill. This elemental skill has two modes of use. If she taps the skill, she rushes forwards and deals hydro damage that scales off her HP to the enemy. The cooldown for this is 6 seconds. Candace can also hold her shield, allowing her to absorb damage based off a percentage of her max HP. This shield is super effective against Hydro. Candace's elemental skill also has a counter property similar to Beto. The counter property works like this. If Candace holds her elemental skill for a long enough period of time, or the shield HP threshold is reached, so that means the shield is broken, or an enemy hits her shield and she chooses to let go of the elemental skill, she will leap into the air, slam down, and deal tons of AoE damage that I'll be dubbing the Heron's Leap. The damage scales off her max HP and the ratio is much higher than her tap elemental skill. Next up, the core of Candace's kit, her elemental burst, Wagtail's Tide. When cast, Candace raises her polearm, dealing AoE hydro damage and granting the active character a 9 second buff with a 15 second cooldown, and the buff gives 3 separate abilities. Emphasis on separate. First up, characters affected by this buff will deal infused hydro damage with their normal attack. Secondly, elemental damage is increased by 20% as long as it comes from a normal attack. And lastly, whenever a character takes the field, a rippling wave of water that scales off of HP will be unleashed onto nearby enemies. So I need everyone's help real quick. Let's focus in on the one with the highest, most insane potential. Characters deal increased elemental damage by 20% as long as the elemental damage comes from the normal attack. Not only is it worded weird, and in the tooltip it shows a 20% damage bonus, not normal attack damage bonus. But also, this is separate from the Hydro Infusion, so even if your character is not able to be infused with Hydro, like Hu Tao, or Diluc, or Arataki Ito, they would still get this 20% damage increase to their respective elemental damage, as long as they apply it using a normal attack. Which makes it weird, does that mean that it can work on the Raiden Shogun? Because technically her damage isn't scaled like a normal attack damage, so getting a flat 20% damage bonus would work for her elemental burst, as long as it's applied using a normal attack and now you see why it sounds so confusing. This one I'm not sure about and we'll find out when it gets released, but that is a question that I do have. With that said, a 20% damage bonus is not minor and combined with some other things like her talents and her constellations, her elemental burst just gets even juicier. One of Candace's ascension talent basically gives any elemental damage dealt with normal attacks while under the effect of her elemental burst a 0.5% increase in damage for every 1000 point of Candace's max HP. At 30,000 HP, Candace would then give a 15% damage bonus on top of the flat 20% damage bonus from her elemental burst. Because of the separation of her hydro infusion and this damage increase, this allows us to have more freedom in the ways in which we can build a fun team comp. And that's why I mentioned that the potential is very insane, not on a meta level per se, but on a creative and fun level. I can see Candace being a good partner for somebody like Kuki or Diluc or a main DPS Singsho. Now, if we enter into the territory of a C6 Candace, she could find some meta relevance in teams like Double Hydro Hu Tao and Ayaka Freeze teams. Before I talk more about this though, let's get on the same page. Candace's Constellation 1 increases her elemental burst duration by 3 seconds, making her total uptime 12 seconds. This means that Candace now only has a 3 second downtime. Candace's Constellation 2 gives a 20% max HP increase for 15 seconds every time Candace hits an enemy with her elemental skill. Constellation 3 increases her burst by 3 talent levels. Constellation 4 turns her elemental skill tap into the big damage counter version, the Heron's Leap, meaning regardless of if you hold or tap, you're gonna get the most damage from her elemental skill. Constellation 5 increases her elemental skill talent level by 3, and Constellation 6 is the big one. Any characters under the effect of Candace's burst except for Candace herself, wait, what the hell, Hoyoverse? Why do you gotta hurt my Candace DPS main buddies like this? 
Anywho, whenever a character with this elemental burst buff does elemental damage with their normal attacks, an attack wave will be unleashed every 2.3 seconds that deal AoE hydro damage equal to 15% of Candace's max HP, and this is considered elemental burst damage. Essentially, if you can infuse yourself, not only will you get a crazy percent damage increase to those attacks, but now you can also burst hydro AoE every couple of seconds. Although it does stink that her C6 does not work with herself as the active character, being able to infuse Candice's normal attacks and having the infusions be HP scaling make her much easier to build and play as a main DPS. Personally, I think she is pretty flexible and can fit into many teams, and while it doesn't seem like she has like a perfect fit right now, characters in the future will probably synergize with her so I'm not too worried about that. I am really hyped to see how the community will utilize Candice. Are you interested in building her up? If so, let me know in the comments who you're going to pair her up with and how you're going to be building her. And while you are down there, support your boy by giving this video a like if you've been enjoying your time so far and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks! Weapons that I'd recommend for Candice would obviously be Staff of Poma if you have the resources and desire to optimize her, with a great alternative being the much cheaper Black Tassel, a 3-star poem that gives HP as a secondary stat. If you lack both of these polearms, I would decide based on your artifact stat lines. If you have good energy recharge, polearms like Dragon's Bane and Deathmatch are great for a more active Candice, with Dragon's Bane being potentially great with a C6 Vape Candice due to the high amounts of elemental mastery you get from Dragon's Bane and the passive that it gives. If you have good elemental mastery, however, then the Catch, the Skyward Spine, and the Engulfing Lightning or the Fabonius Lance give her that much needed consistency in proccing her elemental burst. As of right now though, I really do think you should just stick with Homa or Black Tassel and not worry about the other ones unless you have a specific build in mind. As for artifacts, I think Candice is actually really easy to build. You can't go wrong with 2-piece tenacity and 2-piece heart of death for the hydro damage bonus and the HP increase. If burst consistency is an issue, you can replace either of the two pieces for a 2-piece severing to get that extra energy recharge. Next up, 4-piece noblesse is also pretty enticing for a C6 Candice. Candice can provide a team-wide attack bonus while amping up her C6 wave damage, which is kind of nice. Lastly, 4-piece Heart of Death seems to fit pretty well for a main DPS Candice, allowing her to amp up her normal attack damage after each cast of her elemental skill. I'll be honest, with the more recent Hydro characters like Yelan, Candice, and Nilu, I'm beginning to worry that Hydro will become stale in terms of build variety because the best things you can do is just slap on HP and Hydro damage on them and call it a day. I guess somebody like Yelan though would prefer Severing Fate for a max damage build, but still, my point is, in terms of the stats they desire and the artifacts they use, you can kind of interchange them most of the time and you'll be fine, which is admittedly pretty free to play friendly because now you don't have to build up as many artifact sets, but I would love to see more flexibility in build variety. It seems to me that Hoyaverse definitely is prepping Candace for other characters in the future, so she may not be super strong in the current meta right now, but in 6 to 10 months from now, I don't know where she's gonna be at. For example, we already know that she's gonna work really well with Nilu, but what about upcoming characters that we're gonna get like Nahida, Dea, and Sino? Speaking of Sino, check out this video on screen right now if you wanna learn more about Sino's kit, what he do, and how badass he's gonna look while doing it.